Hello there and welcome to another Starfield video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a subscriber build by Mike. So um, as you uh, may have known if you watched the previous video, initially uh, I did a review of one of Mike's ships where he kind of modified the um, the watchdog ver variant of the, uh, of the uh, ship and he kind of made it more streamlined and in doing so he, um, when I was putting together his ship, both me and him kind of figured out, like, two separate ways to, uh, to kind of merge multiple objects inside of one another. And since then, uh, Mike has been trying to kind of come up with, like, designs that kind of make, uh, to ma basically make a ship, like, as small as possible while still being quite functional. So he sent me, like, a couple of prototypes of vessels. And this is one of them. This is one that I spotted that I quite like the look of initially. Now he sent me other ones. So, Mike, I'll definitely get around to uh, checking out some of the other ones, especially your razor leaf ones. Very, very cool. But this one kind of stood out to me because I liked how it looked. Now, a bit of a bit of a warning for uh, you folks that don't like merging. This ship uses an awful lot of merging. And it even uses some merging that initially I wouldn't really do. But... As I've kind of experimented with uh, the the new merging techniques, and after seeing some of the ships that Mike has came up with, it's kind of made me more kind of open to the idea. So as you can see there, if you look at it, it's a very small profile vessel. Very, very cool. Now there is clipping to this vessel. Uh, as you can see at the top there, we've got a bit of clipping, but it's not, it's not a huge issue necessarily. Um, so the idea behind this, basically, as he was, was saying when he was making his ships, he has like a couple of different versions of this vessel. He was basically just trying to, he was focusing on demos with these uh, these uh, vehicles or these vessels and doing A-Class. And he was just basically trying to refine the process. So like I was saying, there's like a couple he showed me. And this was the initial one that kind of I seen that stood out to me. So let's let's get into the stats anyway, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Now I will say... Uh, I was speaking to Mike. Mike uh, knows this. Uh, some of the some of the uh, the ways he, uh, Mike built, I couldn't replicate because I'm slightly an idiot, and I kind of did other ways that might be easier to kind of re-explain. This is one of the issues when it comes to this merge glitch. It's so cool, but when you start merging multiple objects together, it becomes very tricky. And you basically have to build the ship a very specific way in a very specific order. So if I got some things wrong, Mike, let me know in the comments. Or I'll pin your comment. Now, the first thing is the fuel. The fuel is quite low. Um, when I was doing the merge glitch, I believe I merged two fuel tanks in together. Now, you could potentially merge more. Um, I would have probably, if, if you were going for the idea, like if you want more range on your ship... I would definitely recommend merging more, but I don't mind too much because it's quite a small vessel. It makes sense that it doesn't have a whole lot of range in its fuel. This honestly to me looks like kind of a like we're getting in that territory of like fighter craft slash like single seat vessels. It's very, very cool. Uh, if we do ever get the a cockpit that doesn't need to be connected to a like doesn't need to be connected to a habitat or a, a cargo bay, we will be pretty much there. But currently, we still have to have a ship that's at least three long. At least currently, Michael probably have figured out a way in like a couple of days. Anyway, uh, hull wise is very good. It's got a hull of eight hundred thirty-seven. It's got a carrying capacity of two hundred and eighty. Now that's quite low, but then we're not really going for like a lot of cargo. You could definitely add extra cargo if you wanted to. It's got a, an A-class reactor with 29 power. It's only on a crew of two. Now, Mike was explaining that um, you can increase the crew if you wanted to. So you notice how on the top there, there's like, we have this docking port. And the whole like beast of the merge, so the, the fuel tank, the grav drive, and the reactor are all sitting underneath that, uh, that sloped Deimos piece there just between those two landing gear. And then in front of it, we have a docking bay. We, are, we have the uh, Deimos docking port. I'll show you more in the future. But uh, he opted to, to merge a 2 by one piece over it just to kind of make it more uniform. And I initially was kind of like... I don't know. But then as I started to kind of look at them, like, you yeah, know, that makes sense. It hides everything, makes it more uniform. 
but you could change that to i think i just have that set to i don't know what it's set to i think it's set to just a all-in-one birth you can't actually reach that mo or that habitat module so you could potentially increase the crew by like making it a crew command module and basically keep pumping it. The only downside with that is if you were to get like, say for instance, you were to get the crew up to like six or seven, because this only has two areas in it, the habitat, uh, the, the one by one companion way, and then the cockpit, it's going to be very tight, which you, some people might like that. Anyway, it's going to jump range of 21 light years. I noticed, uh, Mike, in your uh, pictures, you got up to 30. Now I'm not sure what reactor or what jump drive you were using. It looked like you were using the the Nova Galactic one, the Vanguard one, which maybe I built something wrong. But either way, I don't. Again, it's not a huge issue in my eyes having a lower jump range because this this kind of feels like that short range fighter craft. It's got a 730 shield, which is really really good, and then this is armed out the wazoo. So we've got a full uh, set of particle cannons. Uh, the Vanguard ones, you'll notice they're kind of popping out all over. We've got uh, three um, KE Auto uh, Gatling guns. Or we've got one underneath on the chin and then two on the sides there. Now, Mike had his set up in a kind of a different configuration. Uh, but once again, <laughs> when it came to building this, I accidentally mounted them a different way. And I think this way might, it's easier. I don't know. Obviously, I don't want to kind of step on Mike's toes because he built the ship. And if, if he doesn't like the way I've done it, let me know Mike and stuff, you know. But And then we've got three missile pods. So we've got one that's merged inside of that, um, inside of that um, docking bay. And then we've got two that are sitting on the top of the wings merged inside those engine mounts. Now, the, the price to make this is going to be around 300k without perks. And it requires a lot of kind of fiddling uh, with the merging. So you'll probably need a little bit more just so you can duplicate certain pieces. But yeah, let's let's buy it and let's check it out. So this like process has me like really excited for just seeing how far we can go with it. There's a couple of a couple of little caveats. Like you may notice that there's some horizon weapon mounts there, and you may be thinking, Crimson, why is there nothing mounted on them? And they're basically there to hold the uh the weapons inside. Now, theoretically, you could mount the weapons on the outside, but I think that Mike initially was trying to make things as streamlined as possible and not make it as obvious as a of a combat vessel. Now that this here is slightly uh is it glitch? No, it's just barely clipping. It's why when, when people say, like, you should merge because Bethesda will do things, Bethesda did this. Like, that, that's, that's like a normal setup. You can put that cockpit, basically. That's where it's supposed to be. And yeah, that's clipping. But anyway, enter through the back. So we got a little Tayo landing bay the only one that has the door facing forward so it makes sense using that one and then we head in and obviously there's the docking bay up there but you can't access it well you can but just you know you can't get up there which that always seemed kind of interesting to me like how you have the slim dockers that are these tiny objects and then you have like an actual dedicated like docking one by one and you can't enter it like, it'd be kind of cool if you could enter them and they had, like, unique kind of, like, you know, like, styling to them. Like, almost if they had, like, a little extendable area. But anyway. And then into the cockpit. Now, if you were to add a crew comp compartment up on the top, it would be interesting to see how this feels. Because you obviously would be making use of a lot of these, like, seats. Anyway, let's take it off and see how she performs. I'm not going to lie, when building this, it took me quite a few attempts. Um, I had to hit up Mike and ask him multiple times for, uh, like, different pictures from different angles. Um, but despite that, we got it all good. As you can see, a little bit of clipping, but not too much. Engine still functioned very well. Imagine what day Bethesda like troll us all. They like turn on like Achieving realistic um, like damage models and stuff. And like we go to activate the engines on a merge thing and the whole ship just explodes. 
Anyway, so you're gonna have to fiddle a little bit with the the engine power So I have a perk that increased my power by five so for the sake of this review We're gonna mitigate that a little bit, but still we've got enough. So we've got our weapons here. We've got our particle weapons there We've got our ballistic cannons there, and then we've got the missile now this thing is kiss it and I mean kiss it I honestly I would say it's probably a little overkill with with these kind of smaller ships them being kind of i see them more as a fighter now obviously mike may not have intended for this to be a fighter he was just kind of intending it you know he was just experimenting with ships and stuff but i probably would have late would have went a little bit easier on the weaponry um i would have probably just gone with like a primary you know like uh like two maybe particles and like a missile pod just to kind of give the illusion that it is a fighter you know like it's not really meant to be out on its own it's meant to be part of escorting fleets Anyway, and then if we uh, we do a quick speed test. So boost speed is going to be 150 because we've got those two uh, Ares DT engines. Perfect. Our base speed is 150. Boost speed, oh my dear lord, boost speed is 600. It just caps out almost at 600. Quick agility test. This thing has max agility because it's very light. As you can see there. Actually, it's not. I think it is max agility or max mobility. A little roll there, and just give you a little kind of angles just flying around. It looks really, really nice. Like, it's a very, very cool ship. Alright, so we're gonna head out of the planet. I will. Alright, so I have uh, set this up the way I usually do. Uh, this has been a while since I've kind of built like this, but I feel like it's just uh, just so we can be as thorough as possible in recreating this. So I'll show you all the modules we need. Uh, most of them can be bought a new Atlantis. The only kind of ones that I that you need to kind of go and get is the shield generator, the Nautilus, which uh, I got at Hope Town, and then we need one of these bad boys that you can get at uh, at um, Stra um, uh, Neon. I'll actually say that there is a couple of pieces. This is another one you can get at Neon. Ideally, what your probably best bet would be to build the majority of it at your station or your your um your build it at your outpost as you get access to all the structural pieces and then just kind of strap whatever engines you need because i know i had to go to i had to go to um to new atlantis to get the engines i had to go like i was saying to hope town to get the to get the bastille shield generator and then yes yeah. so anyway so we're gonna lay it out first so the way it sets up is Basically, the premise is it's going to look a little something like this. And that's that's pretty much like the, the, the layout, but we're going to obviously have to be a little bit. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get our our uh, engine block all situated. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a little structural piece first. So we're going to duplicate one of these. And ideally, the plan here is we're going to merge all of these down together. Now the way we do this, and I showed this in a previous video, so we're just going to, we're going to move this, like so, we're going to move it up, and we're going to move it up one more. And the, the idea behind this is we're effectively making, we're making a, a part, like a, a blueprint, so we're going to highlight both of these. Now normally, if I was to try and do the little duplication method of just pressing Y, this would go up fine but it wouldn't go down and part of the reason why it wouldn't go down is because there's nothing for it to snap to but if we do the method of grabbing both of them and we want to have a gap here because we're basically using this one by one companion way to determine like where the the engine or where the um fuel is going to go so we're going to press y and we're going to notice how it'll snap down exactly like that and then we're just going to delete it and we're going to do the exact same thing again Snap it down one more time, like so, and that's perfect. Now we're going to move on to the next one. So now that we have the two fuel there, we're going to grab this. Now this is the grab drive. I don't know if this is the grab drive he was using. I thought it was going by the look of it, but it might not have been. But uh, you can kind of use any grab, grab drive you want. I I'm not sure I probably picked the wrong grab drive. Anyway, so we're just going to... Same, same plan again. We're just going to grab all these. And we're going to drop them down like so. Now we have our little area here with our engine, or with another engine, our reactor, our grab drive, and all the rest. So next, what we need to do is we need to start working on the weapons and the tails. So 
this uh, landing bay is going to snap there. Pretty simple. Now, first, what we want to do is we want to mount the engine. So the engines are pretty simple. They're just going to sit like so. And then the landing gear is going to sit above it like so. But we also want to attach extra stuff to said landing gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on our first weapon. So actually, first of all, we're going to take this equipment plate like so. We're going to put that there. And then we're going to mount one of these atlatls here like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be doing this quite frequently. So we're basically going to use these to force down certain objects. So for instance, we're going to... We're going to snap these. These are going to snap here like so. Very easy. And we're going to move the engines very briefly and then... For the weaponry, I snap one of these auto cannons underneath. Now, um, Mike did a different layout, but I was talking to him. And he said, like, whatever way I could get working. And part of the reason I went with them there is because I think they look aesthetically nice. And then we're going to mount the other two up here like so. Okay, perfect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to... We need to get the engines back in there. So we're going to flip them like that. And now we need to get the landing gear. Now the landing gear is going supposed to sit there, but there's no snap point, but fret not. Because we're professionals here. So all we're going to do is we're going to extend this up a little bit, just clear of the... You might have to go kind of high. And we're going to be doing the exact same method as before. We're, we're forcing the landing gear and this 2 by one piece down. And in doing so, because as you can see, the 2 by one will try and snap in there. Just uh, being problematic. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these and duplicate. Sometimes it will go up. That's perfectly fine. And then just when you grab it again, make sure to duplicate the bottom set or highlight the bottom set. And then we're going to drop it down and then you can get rid of the top one again. And then just highlight the bottom set again. And then down it goes like so. And then we're going to do it one more time. Like that. Perfect. So now we're going to get rid of the rest of them. Now you notice our landing gear is there. Now that's perfect. Now we're going to move this though for the moment. Now next what we need to do is we need to mount the, um, the side winglets. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these winglets. And we're going to snap a piece, any piece just up here. I'm going to use this piece here. So sometimes it'll snap. We want it to snap up there we go, just so we can make use of it. The wings are going to be sitting down there like so. But the thing is, we can't put them there just yet. Because uh, we need to mount missiles to them. So we're going to do the exact same strat as before. And grab these two here. Mount one missile. Now you can mount these either way. I mounted them at the top. Just to make it easier. Now all we're going to do is we're going to highlight this. And then we're going to press Y. And they will drop down. And then delete the top one. And then highlight this one. And press it one more time and drop down. Exact same thing again. Just... Highlight it, drop it down. Now those missiles are nice and hidden. Now we're almost there. So the the kind of the 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 second last thing we need to do, and this is the part that's kind of a little bit tricky. So we need to mount the we need to basically mount the the wing the, or the back tail. So the back tail is going to sit. Ooh, see, the back tail is going to sit there. And ideally, we're going to have this piece sitting here. But it's a bit finicky to get it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, a... We need a one-by-one one piece like this one here. Perfect. 
like so. And then we're going to mount this here. And we're going to duplicate these up like that. Come down a bit more. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to grab both of these and we're going to duplicate them down. Exact same as before. And we're going to duplicate them down one more time. Now sometimes it doesn't want to play nice. So for this situation, I think I used the wrong piece. We're going to use this piece. Ah, okay, yeah. So the reason that didn't work is because I was trying to, I should have realized, I was trying to duplicate or push this companion way in here, but it won't go in there because it's no snap. So we're going to actually extend and use this piece. And now we'll find that it will drop. Sometimes it'll work first. There you go. And it dropped like that. Perfect. Now we can delete them and move this again. Now we've got one, one last thing to do that I should have did early, but I am slightly idiotic. So what we're going to do is this needs to come out for a moment because we need to attach our, our shield generator to it. So the method is, is the exact same as what we were doing there before. I'm going to actually remove this for the moment. Put it back in a minute. It's the exact same method. We're just going to snap it up here like so. And then we're going to let it duplicate down. Whoops, what the hell? Excuse me. Um, why do you not want to duplicate down? What's going on? Um, where's my duplicate? Why is my duplicate? Why was there not duplicating? Oh, is it because the missile's on there? Oh, okay. So the reason this doesn't work is because we don't actually have this shield generator here. So I'm going to use another shield generator really quickly. We're going to make use of this one. Now this is kind of why like these these like merge techniques are a bit finicky. Because if you, let's say, for instance, if you were to go and do this, let's say you built most of the ship and then you went to the Hope Town to do the rest of it, you would have to effectively have three of these or two at the very minimum. So, like, you notice how we would have had one on this side. We would have had to briefly delete this one so that we could then duplicate this one down. So watch. Yeah, there you go. Like that. Duplicates it down like so. And then we're going to do it one more time like so. Now that shield generator should be mounted in there. Nice and fine. Now we're going to put this back. Now the only thing left to do is we're going to finally mount this. Actually, no, we're not. I take that back. We're going to mount this first. So this is going to be sitting here like so. And as you can see, the, getting that there is just a simple flipping it upside down. And then we're going to very briefly get this piece here. This cowling. This cowling sits at the front here just to kind of streamline it. Thing is, it looks like it was meant to go here just going by the placement, which is really funny. It just kind of highlights the fact that I feel like Bethesda wanted it there initially. Now, what we're doing here is we're making use of these Horizon weapon mounts. Something that's kind of cool with these is you can mount these weapon mounts out there like so. And then if you remove this and you mount weapon mounts on the other side of them, even though these aren't technically connected to anything, these weapon mounts are fully functioning. So like they're, they're not like floating. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to mount uh, our weaponry. So we're going to mount them on the inside, like so. And no, we want you down. There you go. Perfect. So now, like, quick maths. I'm going to remove the rest of these. Quick maths tells me that we, we don't have max. Why do we not have max? Uh, one, two, three, four. Did I not put one in the bottom? Ah, I did not. I made an error. Okay. Okay. All right, we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to backpedal here a bit, but this is good. Uh, 
this way I can kind of like show you guys if you do end up making a mistake. So you just have to, where I had these weapons initially, uh, I forgot to mount the other one. So we're just going to move these out like so. I'm going to add two more. And now our weapons are full. We've got full of them, full of that. Now putting it back together, we're going to have to kind of do what we were doing initially. So we're going to have to remove the, we're going to put the engines in first, like so. Just flip them. Uh, they'll play somewhat nice, like so. And then next, what we're doing is we're mounting. Need to mount this here, but obviously it's not going to play nice. So what I was doing to make this kind of easier is I just moved this out of my way. And I made a scaffold. Like so. And then the first thing is the landing gear, which we're going to have to go one higher. Get the landing gear like so. And then once again, we're just going to highlight these. Drop them down. Sometimes they will pop up. Nothing to worry about. Just make sure you highlight the bottom ones. And then duplicate down and then just delete the top ones. See, this method, I initially wasn't aware of how far you could go with it. Like, I could, when I did that uh, first video where I reviewed Mike's ship, I, like, kind of, like, seen the potential. And I was like, oh, my dear lord, this has some potential. But obviously, I didn't know, like, the extent of said potential. So now we're just going to do this one here. So we're just going to... Oh, come here, you. Play nice gonna mount these up on top and we're just gonna what's going on here okay yeah so in order to get these down we're gonna have to briefly remove these weapon mounts which is perfectly fine and then just duplicate them down and then once once they're duplicated down This is why I, I was saying, like, when you're building it, you need to go to, um, you need to go to, like, the ship, uh, or your outpost first, because a lot of finickiness. And then you want to make sure to put these horizon weapon mounts back, and I'll show you in a minute why. Oh, whoops. I'll show you in a minute why you need to put them back. So then, finally, now that that, that thing is staying there properly this time. So now we have this little demo spine piece, like so. And then we're going to put the... So the companion... This snaps like so. This comes here like that. Flip it, flip it back. And then finally, you slip this in here. And as you can see, everything is completely nominal. Now something like I was saying, so if I remove this, let's say, oh, I don't like the look of this, and I delete it. Now there's an error, because there's a floating piece, because that... Uh, weapon piece inside there, the weapon mounting, is uh, no longer being held on. What did I just... I don't know what I did there, but that was kind of freaky. Anyway. So that's that's the ship. So, Mike, if you want to comment, uh, let me know, like, what uh, areas I kind of... If I've made errors with, because I know that's not... The, that's I don't think that's the right grab drive. And then, obviously, let me know, like, what things you did differently... And then uh, for everyone else, uh, let me know what you guys think of this. Because obviously, these sort of like kind of... Let me go down a bit. The camera is a bit finicky. These sort of like uh, builds, they're very like controversial. Merging is controversial in general. And I feel like this build is kind of like on the borderline of anybody that does not like merging will hate this. But anybody that doesn't care will love it just because like the compactness of this ship. But anyway, as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of content and check out some of my other videos. Bye-bye.